The year is 1954. Nash, Calvinator, and Hudson do a friendly merger to create one of the most underrated, overlooked companies to ever exist. American Motors Corporation, or AMC for short. American Motors was born in 54. Nash and Hudson plates would be used until being retired in 57. 1958, AMC goes all in with the Rambler. A staple for the Rambler was the 195.6. With roots that trace clear back to 1941. Starting off life as a 172.6 cubic inch displacement in 1941 and grew to 184 cubic inch displacement in 1953 and then grew another time in 1955 to 195.6. The 195.6 cubic inch displacement flathead 6 3.2 liters is often referred to as the 196, so we're just going to mention it as the 196 because I'm dyslexic and sometimes I'll get the 5 and the 6 mixed. Engine specs are going to be the highest output, just so you know, and every year could be different, might be different because of carburetors or what have you. 90 horsepower at 3,800 RPM, 150 pound-feet of torque at 1,600 RPM, bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 4 inches, compression 725 to 1. It featured four main bearings. It was built of cast iron. Fun fact, the 196 flathead didn't use manifolds. The carburetor was bolted to the head itself. Nash would use this engine from 1941 in various displacements. And this is where it gets tricky. Everybody was going overhead valve. So AMC was strapped for cash because, and they couldn't really afford to make a brand new engine, two brand new engines, because they just built a new V8. So they converted the 195.6 to overhead valve. But the crazy thing is, this wasn't Nash's first rodeo making an overhead valve engine. Nash was a pioneer with overhead valve engines. Going clear back when the company was founded, Charlie Nash worked for GM at one point, and when he left the company to start Nash Motors, several key people came with him. People from Buick. Buick back in the day was one of the few that offered overhead valve. Overhead valve was always a better option, but it was more costly to build. And Nash always offered an overhead valve engine on the Ambassador line. Why they didn't just use an overhead valve engine? Because a lot of those overhead valve engines in the Ambassador line had seven main bearings, just like the later AMC 232 that comes later. So, AMC strapped for cash. They decide to just put overhead valve on the pre-existing flathead design. In 1955, AMC converts the 196 flathead to overhead valve, keeping the bottom end mostly unchanged. So a lot of parts interchange between the two engines and was introduced in 55 for the 56 model year. The flathead was taken off the menu from 56 and 57, but it returned as an option in 58. And it was the main engine used in the American line. Let's talk specs. 195.6 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line six, three 2 liters, making up to 127 horsepower, 4,200 RPM, 180 pound-feet of torque at 2,200 RPM with a bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 4.3, compression 8.7 to 1, four main bearings made of cast iron. Very important information, the 196 flathead was essentially bulletproof and all you had to really do was change the oil and adjust the valves periodically. The 196 overhead valve requires a lot more maintenance. The head bolts need retorqued every 8,000 miles, checked every 4,000 miles. The cause of the head bolts loosening up is from thermal expansion and contraction of the head. Left unchecked, the seal will blow. Another thing about this engine, it doesn't like to get hot. If it gets hot, it causes damage to the engine. Well, I know, well, duh, but some engines are way more forgiving. This one isn't a forgiving engine. Never, ever run it hot. And a telltale sign of it running hot is a blown head gasket. And if the head gasket blows, then you have to fix it and it might have warped the head as well. Valves need to be adjusted every eight to 10,000 miles. Valve adjusting specs are cast into the intake cover. Very important, those figures that are listed are hot specs. The valve should be adjusted with a fully warmed engine. Engines should sound like a well-oiled sewing machine. Never quiet. If the valves are quiet, it's possible that they are too tight. Just for clarification, the valves could be quiet with the hood shut, but with the hood open, 
It should sound like a well-oiled sewing machine. Head bolts retorqued to 62 foot-pounds in a special sequence to tighten the head bolts. AMC would offer a die-cast aluminum block version of the 196 overhead valve, which was on offer from 1961 to 1964 alongside the cast iron version. It's important to note the aluminum block is one eighth of an inch wider than the cast iron block. It uses a different head with a different head bolt pattern. The aluminum block used a cast iron cylinder head, but it does not interchange with the cast iron 196 block. They are different. The aluminum block version is wider and it has a different head bolt pattern, so they do not interchange. AMC would offer the 196 overhead valve until 1964 when they made a new set of modern era engines, the 199, 232, 242, 258, that will probably be the next engine episode. Honestly, that was all going to be tied into one episode, but I felt that the 196 needed its own episode, so I split them up. The crazier thing yet is the flathead outlived the overhead valve version. The flathead was discontinued in 1965, one year after the overhead valve version. The 196 flathead was Nash's bread and butter. It was found in like cars like the Statesman. It was Ramblers in line six in the 50s. Cross country wagons had them. 196 overhead valve was found in Rambler after 1956. And it was the base engine found in a lot of cars and wagons. The flathead was offered in the American line at that point from 58 to 65. And it was an option in some cars. I was told that it was offered in any car except for the Ambassador as a write-in, but I couldn't find any information to back that up. All right, now it's time for a new segment today. Instead of Would You Rather, to just keep it fresh, this is going to be called Making Connections. We got three examples today. And in the comment section below, tell me what you think about this segment. I'm going to implement this whenever we can't do a Would You Rather. All right, in the very first example, have you ever noticed the similarities between Crush from Finding Nemo and Danny Coker from Counts Customs? Once you see that they are pretty much the same character, like th their mannerisms and everything is just pretty much on point. You can't unsee it. Second example, watch this right here. The background singer of The Fifth Dimension, he kind of sort of looks like a darker Frank Fritz from American Pickers. Can you see it? I can definitely Third see it. Third scenario. Have you ever made the connection between Jack Black, like the School of Rock, early 2000s Jack Black, and Chris Farley are very similar to one another in comedic. He acted a lot like Chris Farley, especially in that show. Maybe it was just for the School of Rock. I don't know. In the comment section, what did you think of this segment? Should we do more of this in the future? Did you like it? Did you hate it? All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and song title. First person to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. If you guys have any requests for engine episodes that you would like to see, put them in the comment section below as well. And until next time, toodaloo!